Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Welcome, and here now, Corey Gomez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Today, I am joined by a role model of mine. Some of you don't know this. Some of you may. He probably doesn't. I am here with uh, actor, martial artist, stunt coordinator, and the new host of the Camacho Experiment, Mr. Art Camacho. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Hey, brother. No, it's fun. It's fun. I'm glad we connected. I know we're going back and forth, but... This is so cool. I, I love what you're doing, brother, and it's an honor for me, seriously. You know, years ago, the first time I think you ever came up on air was years ago. It's probably 10, 15 years ago. I got asked to do a, a show where I talked about uh, the Chuck Norris movie, Code of Silence. And we're watching this on the air, and I had seen it before. And, and they come up, and they're there. They're, they're, him and Dennis Farina, they're after the Camacho gang. And I sat there, it's like... This sucks. And like it got quiet. And I was like, how the fuck do you make a movie where your gang is the Camachos and there's no Art Camacho? There's no Hector Camacho Macho. I was like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Chuck should be ashamed. So we go back, even though you don't know it, we go back about 15 years. I agree. Damn it. Damn it. I never got the call. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Now, I gotta ask you the question I ask. I ask everybody this first: How'd you get started in the business? How did I get started in the business? Well, first off, you know, in a nutshell, I'm this fat little kid from the barrio. Don't know shit about shit. I, uh, you know, uh, I saw my first Bruce Lee movie, and and uh, coincidentally, I got my my butt whooped by my gang members around the same period of time, and and that's that that changed my whole life. You know, I, the, the most negative thing, I, I say it facetiously now, but I mean, when you get beat up, when you're a victim of violence or bullying, man, does it mess you up, fucks you up, fucks you up, excuse my language, but messes you up big time, brother. And um, and you can either, you know, you can either run, you can either hide, and then let it scar you for life, or you can turn it into something strong. And if, because at first I was scared, I literally, after I got beat up, I was, for three weeks, I was scared to leave my house. And, uh, and, and then I said, no, I can't, I can't, I gotta fucking live, man, I gotta get out there. And then after seeing Bruce Lee, it's like, holy moly, you know, I'm straight, I love, 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 love with like there's no tomorrow. But man, when I saw Bruce Lee, it's like, oh man, that guy's awesome, look at his body, look at his face, look at his move, man, shit. <laughs> um, and, and that's what he did, it, buddy. I, I started training, but but he wasn't like you know. Everybody says, <clears throat> you know, I start training, change my life. No, man, I trained in, in Japanese karate. Three months, three months into it, I was so bad and so lazy, and, and you know, and, and and the instructor, very nice guy, I forgot his name, but he's a nice, nice white guy. He came up to my father, said, you know what, Mr. Camacho, you know, your son really, he doesn't want to be here. He's, I think you're wasting your time and your money bringing him here because he's not learning and he's not. You know, he's not applying himself. He doesn't want it. And so my father took me out. And uh, then, then a couple of years later, I did you know some taekwondo. And then it wasn't a troll. It took me a while, but finally started really getting into the martial arts. And um, and I, I was a Tijuana, believe it or not. And I started training in the backyard with some other instructors and some friends. And uh, and the big turning point for me was was uh, was uh, hooking up with my chief, Eric Lee. You know, I'd seen him on magazines, and then all of a sudden he's doing a workshop at the Bruce Lee Museum. I said, cool, Bruce Lee Museum, Eric Lee, <laughs> it's yeah. meant to be. <laughs> and I go there, and I was like starstruck. And he was such a nice guy, such an amazing human being. He is, that's what I'm saying, he is, but he was then. And I stuck, I became a student, and bingo, man. I started training with him, and then sporadically I would train, you know, with other masters, like, uh, you know, at the Kali Academy with Anna Santa, Richard Bustillo. Um, and uh, so I was learning Kali, some JKD, and uh, and uh, and just every time, you know, when I got to movie start, and I'm still, still, whenever I go on the movie set, I'm picking everybody's brains when I work with different masters. I'm always a student, brother. Always a student. Did martial arts calm you down? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I think I, I expressed to you that <clears throat> that at first, <clears throat> even though I was lazy and all that stuff, but when I got my butt kicked, all I wanted to do was just. Get the guys, I swear to God, I said, this is never going to happen to you again, Art. Never, 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 never. And all I wanted to do, honestly, 
you know, in my mind, even though I was, I didn't have a, you know, set skill or didn't have the, you know, some people catch on naturally. I don't, I don't, you know, but yes, yes. Cause that was my first initial intention was supposed to defend myself and just beat the shit out of people. I wanted that so bad. And, uh, then, then as, as a lot of time went on, I managed to channel that into a more positive thing. But the scars stay inside. I don't know about you, brother, but in my life, I still, I swear to God, I still carry that. But I, I, I use, you know, I don't think you get over it completely. You know, you just, you just got to let it either control it or let it control your life, one or the other, but you don't get rid of it. <clears throat> I'll throw you a good one. I, uh, I had always done martial arts, but, and I was okay, but when I, I used to get fucked with a lot. And, yeah. uh, and I also uh, lived in a, in a home that where I suffered severe mental abuse. You know, I turned to drugs, alcohol, everything. But I, de- I determined when I was 18 and I graduated, I was like, no one's fucking with me again. And I'm going to get revenge on, on, one of, on all the people that ever did. I started studying even harder than ever. I was buying special vitamins from a guy's locker out of a gym, you know, that come complete with the needles. And, I mean, I turned into a, a, a monster. And I remember I I found out where one guy had moved to. I had on brass knuckles and I had like big like motorcycle gloves and I was going to kill him. I was going to beat the living shit out of him. And I wow. came there and I got out of my car and I swear to God, it's a true story. I said, I said, do you know who the fuck I am? And he, he didn't recognize me. I, of course, I look different now. You know, I've been, you know, I was a lot bigger and everything. And he's like, are you here to repossess my car? Because he's like, because I swear to God. You know, and, and I'm looking at this. This guy's got a forty thousand dollar house. I'm looking at this, and I was like, you know, I tell you what, I, I'll tell the bank you're doing okay. And I sat down, and for some reason, it was like I could have killed this guy in ten seconds. But you know what? Life has already murdered him, and he's in his twenties. And from that day on, it was always like, and this isn't an open invitation for people to fuck with me because I, I, I don't don't do that. I don't recommend it. But right. it's also the case of just thinking, you know what? Let it go. It's going to stay with you, and it's always going to be in your mind. But like you, let it go. The Lord's going to punish these people on their own. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I I, I agree with you. I agree with you. My, because you still, my first tendency is to 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 to, to pay back and then all that shit. But you know, and that's why even now when I get pissed off, I really you know. I, 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 I stop myself before I say anything, write anything, or do anything, or whatever, think it through, and then just, just work it through, work it through, because you're right, brother, you're right, man. Um, I, like I, I, I told you in our conversations that, that, that in life, life, and, and I've been so, so, so blessed, I mean, so many challenges, so many challenges I've faced, more than, than, than people would know, but I still consider it a blessing. Because every time I keep getting back up, I keep getting back up, brother, because God put this desire and this drive in me that, that you know, you ain't going to stop me. You kick my ass, you'll knock me down, you make me cry, but I'm coming. I'm coming back up, buddy. <laughs> no one's going to stop our Camacho. <laughs> How big a blessing is it, or was it, I should say, to work with my buddy in Ninja Academy? I'm talking about my pal, Mr. Gerald Akamura. One of your <laughs> early roles. In. How awesome is Gerald Akamura? Let's just say it now. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Give you an idea how awesome it is. The first film I ever directed, I I passed up some name actors to have him in one of the starring roles. That's how cool it was. I love that guy. He's amazing as a human being, so amazing, and as a martial artist, wow, wow. I mean, you know, it's in his grips, and you're like you know, you tie you up like a pretzel <laughs> before you know it, you know. But it was so amazing for me. Even that, that was one of the first projects that I did. And I mean, working with Gerald and working on that film, the director was probably the worst I've ever worked with in my life. Nico, whatever the fuck his name was. But he was he was so fucking abusive and such a bad, bad person as a human being. But the film was such an amazing experience, brother. Amazing, amazing. And Gerald, I can't say enough things. He's my brother. He's, he's my, you know, mentor in many ways. And, you know, a great, great martial arts guy. Great martial and funny and shit. Funny you see that that mean ass look on his face, that long ass Fu Manchu beard shit going on. Stand up comic, man. <laughs> and he invented a tampon knife. I mean, come on, we got to give this guy all the credit in the world. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It was fun, man. It was fun, man. You know, you had your big run with PM Entertainment, um, uh-huh. you know, a company I would have loved to have worked for, but Blockbuster fucked that up. But uh, you got to be in Ring of Fire with Don the Dragon, a great movie, Romeo and Juliet martial art movie. Is that is that how you met Don the Dragon, or did you know him beforehand? Uh, yeah, you know what? We, we had met, because Eric Lee was doing his choreography, and we had met before at Eric Lee's house. And again, I was this fucking little nothing, and I was starstruck. It's like, oh shit, it's Don the Dragon Wilson. Holy shit, there's Don the Dragon Wilson going to the bathroom. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was it was amazing. I think it was one of the first films <clears throat> because uh, then I did, I think, Out for Blood with him. Yeah. Uh, but believe it or not, Ring of Fire <clears throat> is one of the main reasons that PM started hiring. That was the first, I think it was my first PM film. And and in that film, the quick story is that <clears throat> I was doing this fight scene. And again, you know, I I was just a kid, so I was actually pretty good. I, that that I was natural at. Nothing else, but I was natural at movie fights because as a kid, I was fucking did that every day. But <clears throat> that film, we did a fight scene in Chinatown, and then then I'll tell you a quick story that in the scene, I think uh, I think Vince, uh, I guess who does, but anyway, somebody kicks me. We're doing it. I come behind, he gives me a spinning back kick, boom, gets me, and and then and, and this was a guy who kicked it really hard, and he did good. I mean, no, no, not just to say, he did great. It was just me, my greenness coming in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so he <clears throat> he kicks me. First time goes right up the gut. Boom, I go flying back. Because just the, the power of that kick just sent me back. It didn't hurt me, but it just made a you know a good impact. Mm-hmm. So, take two, the kick comes a little higher. It comes at chest level. So boom, I go flying. I'm talking about flying, literally flying off my feet and landing on, on, on concrete. And, and again, I'm fucking fresh. I'm young. I'm cool. Ah, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> but the third one, this time I said, look, I'm going to make it even more exciting. I'm going to literally jump right when even I feel that impact. I'm, my feet are off the ground. So the third one, believe it or not, it came higher, hit me right on the throat. Mm. I went, fuck, I went flying back. And he felt the impact, which obviously didn't, didn't kill me. But, I mean, I went flying back even farther because I was very light on my feet. And, and on that one, the weird thing about it, Corey, is that I'm fucking on the ground, and you cannot move. When you're on the ground, you do not move until you hear cut. And I didn't hear cut. So in my mind, here's what was going through my mind. I was fuck, man, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I mean, I, I, I might have heard his foot on my throat. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that I, that I got the timing wrong, and I thought, okay, I'm fired. For sure, they haven't yelled cut because I'm fired. I'm fired. Okay, that's it. And, and still, it seemed like hours, but it was only probably like a couple minutes. And then I finally opened my eyes and looked up, and people were standing around me looking down. And I'm looking up at them. They thought I was dead. They, they saw me get kicked in the throat, go flying, you know, hit the... <laughs> Here I thought I was fired. They thought I was dead. And afterwards, they go, hey, you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. They go, sorry for what? He kicked in the throat. I go, no, no, I, I, it was my fault. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, and... Um, and, and then afterwards, I hear the the, uh, the producer tell him, tell tell uh, tell Eric, hey, you know, bring back that Mexican man. He takes the hits, works cheap, and doesn't complain, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows you what a good actor you were, because you're Hispanic and you're in an Asian gang. I mean, you're a chameleon. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> That's good act. I don't care what anybody says. Don, now Don told me I was wrong, but come on, let's be honest. That and that move, and I love Ring of Fire. I loved all three of them, but yeah. that first one, come on, that was the same house they used, wasn't it? For where Don lived and the girl lived, they just filmed part in the front yard and the backyard. I'm, I'm convinced <laughs> that that gym, that high school, and that store were all the same thing. They just moved the shit around. I mean, that movie was Corey, pretty pretty low budget. Come on, tell me I'm right, Corey. I'm sworn to secrecy, brother. If I say it, Basically, I'll have a hitman at my door, so I can't, I can't I divulge anything, brother. I mean, even when I showed it to my wife, uh, not long ago, maybe a year or two ago, getting ready for Don's interview, even she was like, okay, this high school and this fighting arena is the same thing. They just changed the sign. I was like, well, I can't <laughs> confirm or deny this, although I've tried. <laughs> I take the fifth. You know, you did uh, another PM. You did Final Impact with Lorenzo Lamas. That was um, actually maybe one of, God, had to be one of Gary Daniels' first films, you know, where he was the fighter in the club. 
Uh, is that how yeah. you met? Because I know you worked with him a lot too. Is that where you met him, or he had a small part in yeah. Ring of Fire too? I think too, didn't he? Yeah, small part. I didn't meet him in Ring of Fire. I met him there, but yeah, Final Impact. That's the uh, uh, that's the one with the ring, right? That's the one they, it, that was the one where Michael. They were the Lorenzo was Michael the washed up kickbox. They brought in Michael Worth. Yeah, he was going to be the <laughs> next big star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, interesting story about that one is that film to this day is one of my most embarrassing appearances. But the reason I say that is because uh, uh, I, uh, Eric Lee is the nicest guy in the world, nicest guy in the world. But he won't tell you, you know, you're, you're fat. He'll tell you, okay, yeah, you look okay. I'll tell you, you're fat. If you're fucking on film, you're hey, you're fucking fat, Corey. <laughs> Brother, you know, or do something. But in that film, I took off my shirt, and I see it to this day. It's fucking embarrassing because I'm fat. But having said that, that motivated me because if you were, if, again, I don't know if you've seen this film, like To Be the Best and some of the other films, oh, I yeah. got shredded. I was really lean, you know. Um, but but in that film, it was like so fucking embarrassing. It's like, holy shit, keep the shirt on, put on a jacket, Art Camacho. What the hell are you <laughs> thinking, man? <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it was fun. It was fun. Lorenzo was great. And again, I was starstruck with Lorenzo, you know, the Renegade and all that stuff. And, you know, we, we barely talked, but I was like, fucking Lorenzo Lamas, how cool is that? <laughs> I'm, I'm you, man. <laughs> I asked him, I said, hey, you know, because uh, my thing with that movie, and, and I mean, I hate to sound like a, a critic, although I review films, Michael Worth was so little. I mean, he's an amazing martial artist, but he he was so little, and here's, it, it, I think that's the only thing that hurt, but I said, Lor I said, Lorenzo, I said, why did they have to kill you in this film? And he's like, because I didn't want to do part two. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's the best answer I've ever heard. But you were not, you did fighting in Deadly Bet too with uh, Jeff Wincott, probably the yeah. the most underrated martial arts actor out there, in my opinion, is Jeff Wincott. And uh, you know what? Did did you get to fight? I can't remember. Did you fight with him in that film? I think I did. I think I think it was very quick. But um, yeah, yeah. You know what? I think it was part of a street fight in there. Kind of played two roles. One where they just I did some back stuff where they're just in the ring where they just close up stuff like that. But I think I fought him in a street fight. But oh, Jeff was great. I love Jeff to work with. He was uh, nice to me, very, very cool, and very good, very good. I helped a little bit, very little with choreography, because I still wasn't, you know, a choreographer then. But uh, Jeff was great. I can't say enough nice things about him, you know? I tell everybody when they're like, because sometimes you'll say, you know, oh, you got to watch a Jeff Wincott movie. And they're like, you know, who's Jeff Wincott? And it was like, right. go on YouTube, you look up Gauntlet Scene, Mission of Justice. I said, that's yeah. the best of scream of work you're ever going to see. And the word on the street is the guy learned it an hour before he filmed it. I said, that's a natural <laughs> talent. And Mission of Justice is probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, straight to video martial art film ever made, in my opinion. But, I mean, that guy should have been. He should have been a, a Bruce Lee. Uh, I mean, good looking, young, muscular. I mean, he he should have really been on the on the in the big budget screens. Yeah, you know, you never know. I swear to God. I mean, that's that's the that's the thing. You never know what what's going to hit, what's not going to hit. But you're right. He was a great actor, a great actor. I think uh, even Charlene. Uh, oh gosh, I forgot her last name. She was a TV star. Uh, Charlene, she played a love interest in there. Oh, um, yeah, um, Tilton, Charlene Tilton. Tilton, yes, yes, yes. She was so sweet, so beautiful, so sweet. Again, I was starstruck. Again, I'm still Corey to this day. I'm still starstruck when I work with some of these guys. Like when I worked with Adrian Paul, starstruck. It's like holy crap, the Highlander. I'm working with the fucking Highlander. Oh, I'm starstruck you know, when I talk to you guys. I mean, shit. Yeah, I smiled during I'm the whole interviews. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm still a Star Trek, but yeah, Charlene Tilton, uh, Jeff Wincott, and much Rich, Richard Munch, and I learned so much about directing from him, and uh, people like Fred Owen Ray, just, I mean, and Munch was such an easygoing guy, man, easygoing, loved it, loved working with him, I don't know how many different films I did with him, but I loved, loved working with him. You got to work a few times, too, with... Another uh, amazing, no one ever says a bad word about this guy. I hope you don't. Nice, a nice, one of the nice guys I've met. You got to do a nice little run there of uh, movies with Sam Jones as well. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sam is fucking amazing. He is, uh, you know, a funny story with him is I did a, you know, I forgot the name. God, it wasn't Fist of Honor. It was like, it was a PM film. Oh, Fist of Honor. Man, Fist of Honor, yeah. <laughs> one of the first choreography gigs, and I had one of my guys, Butch, Butch, incredible half Samoan, half white martial arts guy, 
and we're doing this prison fight scene, and and I and I wanted you know you really push me push the envelope with, with Sam Jones, so he's fighting all these guys right in the in the cell, and he's fighting one guy, and at one point he's supposed to sense and not even look, and this guy comes behind him and does a jump spin kick and gonna hit him right at the head. The guy was kicking too high for Sam Jones to duck. I told the guy, you know, Sam, are you cool with it? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a guy come right at your head, so you got to duck, brother. You got to, you know, he's going to yell, you, you just duck. And so what happened, this guy's airborne. This is airborne. And you know, spinning jump kicks are fucking fast. Once you're airborne, you're gone. It's like mm-hmm. launching home. <laughs> so at that moment on the actual take, the guy jumps and he kicks, and I see it, and Sam jumps almost like in slow motion. Sam Jones is not fucking ducking, and I'm thinking, oh my God. God, that guy literally, literally airborne, and that kick is spinning so fast, and he and he comes right at Sam Jones' head, then airborne, he lifts it over his head and comes down and misses him at the last three second. It was amazing the control that martial arts guy had, Butch Tori Sala, and Sam was thanking him, of course. <laughs> but he was amazing. But Sam was amazing to work with as an actor. He's got such presence about him, man. He's got very authoritative presence. And, and a fighter, brilliant, brilliant, safe, sells it. You know, again, you were right. Not enough nice things can be said about Sam, you know, incredible. What were your memories of working with uh, Jim Helwig, a.k.a. the ultimate warrior <laughs> in firepower? I have uh, I met him. He was nice to me. I can also tell you there's a reason why most people in my state hate his guts, and it's all justifiable. How was he to you? You know what? Uh, first off, I'll say this. You, you know Herman Munster? Yeah. You know the last? <laughs> yep. So that, that's Jim. Jim is a, is a big fucking teddy bear with me. Jim was a big fucking teddy bear. I loved him to death. He, uh, <clears throat> we became friends. And, and, and he was really, I mean, the guy tried so hard. Because he wasn't, you know, a martial artist per se. He did the WWF, but I, I taught him martial arts. But the guy would try so hard. He actually flew me up to his house. In, uh, in Arizona to train him and um, and we spent some time together and he was just to me he was great he was great you know, he was great I couldn't say there's nothing negative <clears throat> to say about Jim I had the best experience in my life with him you know he, you know I met him as a kid he signed my uh, t-shirt and then he you know he babbled like the ultimate warrior so I don't know what he said to me he might have told me to fuck <laughs> off for all I know but he was nice to me but that fire I got to tell you about this firepower movie cuz you're you're uh-huh. a choreog- you did choreography on it so I'm watching this movie with a uh, girl I'm 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 trying to date at the time and she's getting into it cuz here's Gary Daniels he's shredded he's got the ponytail <laughs> and I was yeah. I was 30 seconds away from pausing this movie and, and finally having sex and then Gary Daniels gets murdered. And she said, why did they kill the hot one? And it was like, God damn it, I'm going to find this McQueen guy and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> That's funny. That movie killed oh. my night dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a hell of a movie. I just watched it again not that long ago. I had to get an import disc because it didn't get a proper release here in the States. But uh, right. it's a hell of a movie. I'm surprised that that didn't get... Uh, theatrical, just because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I got on the Ultimate Warrior's name alone, I thought it could have gotten, you yeah. know, a bigger push. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it could have been. It was, it was fun. I tell you, you know, Corey, I can't say enough good things about the, that era for me. It was fun. I mean, I'm living in the present, of course. I'm, you know, I've done a lot of great things since then, but those are fun times, man. I, I, I cut my teeth on PM films, you know? And... Uh, Power was, was another fun one. Where got I don't know, 13, 14 fights and playing a character and working with Jim. My God, it was fun, fun. Just and they're paying me, <laughs> paying you to have fun. I love PM Entertainment. And I'll tell you, uh, I I got to the thrill of my life about two weeks ago. I got to interview Stephen Williams. I'm a big fan of Stephen Williams. And of course, really? we, we had to talk about L.A. Heat. And you know, my huh? wife had never heard of L.A. Heat, and I said, "Oh, you got to just." Uh, I watch this LA Heat and we're watching it and it was funny because she was like some of this stuff looks familiar and it was like this is the most genius show ever I said this show probably cost 75 bucks to make but they edited it in all I said there's the ring of fire to explosion there's the, the <laughs> band flip and recoil I said this over this shot over that CIA code name Alexa the way they blended <laughs> in all the stuff from that was so I mean 
that is the most genius thing. I think I like the concept of that more than I like the show, which was awesome anyway. Uh huh. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you directed a couple of them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, those guys were just, I mean, TM was number one. It, it, it was a machine. Give an idea. At that one point, we were, uh, you know, we did a scene where they were shooting the TV series on one side of the house, but we were shooting a part of the feature on the other side of the house, you know? <laughs> we were working those things, man. But Stephen Williams was great. Very nice. I mean, we never got to talk too much, but the, the time I spent the few, you know, the time I spent with him, he was very respectful, very nice, and of course, brilliant, brilliant actor. And years ago, I, you know, I, I would have thought that he would have remembered me, but years ago, I saw him in New York, and he said, oh, come on, show us, Stephen, you know? It was so cool. So cool. How hard was it, though, like, you're directing, you know, because Lawrence Hilton Jacobs said it could be a pain in the ass. How hard is it was, like, Okay, I can use this Ring of Fire too, because you know you know you're Don the Dragon guy. I can use this whole big car explosion Ring of Fire too. Now I just gotta match these cars and find them for a chase. Could it be a little challenging in the director aspect? Not really, because pretty much the way PM had the formula down pat, so so anybody can go in there and just just do it because they they, they had they had to control a lot of their second unit and their second unit controlled a lot of those tie-ins. So they would just tell me, okay, Art, this is what you're shooting. Okay. So I would just creatively, you know, design the shots around that, but they would line up what I had to shoot when it came to matching the shots, <clears throat> you know. And uh, so, so in that part, it wasn't, wasn't easy. I think, you know, I'll be honest with you, the most challenging film for me as a director, number one, they were all challenging. Recoil was challenging. But the, the one where I, I think I broke my own record was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a film called Little Bigfoot 2 which was a sequel to Little Bigfoot, which I did, which was very successful for PM. So right away, the minute that sold at the film market, they signed me out to uh, produce, write, and uh, direct uh, the sequel. And uh, it was fun because we had, uh, you know, some kids from that were very famous at the time, like Michael Fishman, who was on Roseanne, and this little uh, Taryn uh, Noah, who was on uh, another famous TV show at the time. God, I keep I always remember, I forget that name, it was a comedian guy. <laughs> and his wife said he had tool time, Mr. Tool Time. Oh, Tim Allen. Tim Allen, yeah, yeah, yeah his show. <clears throat> we used uh, one of the kids from his show and one kid from Roseanne. But the story, I mean, the last day we were losing two actors. It was their last day and we were behind on shots and we're shooting up there in Big Bear. And Corey, I, they were telling me, okay, the producers are kind of uptight. They're saying, God, oh, you got to shoot these guys out today. You got, today's their last day. You got to shoot all their scenes. So what I did, <clears throat> I, you know, came to me. I said, you know, screw it. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. And I set up four different sets within, you know, within probably like a quarter mile of each other. And I set up four different cameras, four different little skeleton crews. So I directed four scenes simultaneously. So I would run through, so I'd shoot one scene, blah, 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 okay, cut, run to the other one, okay, and action, run, shoot it, cut, go to the third one, cut, then go to the, the fourth one, which is in the K, and shoot it, and cut, okay, and then I tell them, okay, change this, change this, do this different, do this different, then go back to set number one, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> four different sets simultaneously, that was, that was exhilarating, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a rush, it was a rush. I never did drugs too much. I, I tried to dabble it when I was young, but this rush on doing films was bigger than any drug experience I've ever had, brother. I'll tell you that right Jesus. now. What was it like when you first met uh, Matthias Hoos? Matthias, yeah, oh, it was it was great. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. I mean, we we really he's too friends, nice. but not with, he's too nice. <laughs> yeah, very nice, just sweet guy. When you you know, because you look at him, you you think he's big. You know, hairy looking guys like, holy shit, he's going to fucking knock the daylights out of you. But the sweetest guy, great, great to work with, to direction well. You know, I think he was, he was again, one of those underrated guys. When I, I interviewed think, him, I was like, because I didn't talk to him, you know, it was all through like, you know, just messages and that. I'm thinking I'm going to get this guy. All right, let me tell you. You're like that. And it's like. Oh, how are you today? And I'm like, holy shit, am I talking to the right guy? What's going on? And yeah, just the, it, it was just a gent, that's a, tr to me, that's a definition of gentle giant. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great, you, great, great. You worked great with God. him a few times, Rothrock, but your, your closest was always with Don the Dragon. Yeah, Don and I, you know, we hit it off really well. I think once we, uh, 
once we started working together, the first one was a little challenging. I forgot the name of it. It was for Corman. But it was very challenging because I really, here's, here's the way I work. <clears throat> I'm either going to choreograph, put the full moves together, or come in and be a traffic cop. Have have the, the martial arts actor who knows what they do kind of, you know, kind of just steer them a little bit. And, uh, and you know, let them do the choreography and I'll do, well, like when I work with Steven Seagal, I wasn't going to show Steven Seagal Aikido. So I would just tell him, I, a sense, I just need to move. Give me some hand moves that will send the guy in this direction. So he's like an encyclopedia of different moves. So he'd show me a move. Oh, yeah, that's the one. But we're done because, uh, I, yeah, I'm not nowhere near, near, near. Now. I'm, a, I'm a speck of sand compared to Don when it comes to a lot of the, the martial arts, let's say fighting, kickboxing. But we have a couple of same weaknesses. I have a strong right leg. He has a strong right leg. You know, I like to use my hands. He likes to use his hands a lot. So he was a natural fit for, for us to, for me to choreograph for him because I, I moved like him a little bit, you know? So that's why, that's why we click so much. And he likes the same things. I mean, he loves Bruce Lee. I love Bruce Lee. So every time we try to give it that flavor, not copy Bruce Lee, but give it that kind of flavor. <clears throat> you know, in fact, Ring of Fire 2 was our homage to Bruce Lee, you know, because when he's fighting at the ground and, and, uh, and that's why, I mean, we, we, I think I did that choreograph like 20, 20 episodes, maybe 20, 20 shot less films, and I directed him in four of them. But yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. We had such a strong, strong bond and as friends and obviously as martial artists, but, but just working together. It was really cool, really fun. You worked with Gary Daniels a ton. Yeah. Uh, Recoil, it, I'm going to say, is PM's best film. I, I think a lot of people might agree with that. Uh, you directed that. That had to have been a ton of work, because, I mean, that was some serious explosive stunts in that film. Yeah, you know what? That one that one had its own challenges, because uh, they had a full-on second unit, which actually Spiro Rosados, who, uh, who directed a lot of the huge, huge, most of the big action, he actually ended up doing, you know, he's the one, he's the uh, Fast and Furious guy, <laughs> you know. The greatest said, franchise in history, might I say, Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, so so what I did, there was times when I was running two units, and he was running a full-on action unit. Give an idea, in the, uh, in the bank scene, uh, and here's an interesting story, is that, um, you know, I, again, in my younger days, I, you know, I was less patient. I'd grown, I'd learned to, you know, to be a little wiser and more patient, but I had an AD. The first AD we had on the set was so abusive. Uh, his first assistant director who runs the show, that's what the guy does. And um, very abusive. So he's always yelling at the, 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 the makeup girl, the wardrobe, and all this stuff. And I would tell him, you know, guy, chill. chill. I mean, I yell when I'm in the heat of the moment with my stunt guys. But with everyone else, I'm very, very respectful. But not that I don't respect the stunt guys, but they know, you know, it's, it's martial arts. Come on, guys, you know. We, we, we respect each other, but we're tough, you know? Um, but, but one day, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, I think the wardrobe girl came, came to me running. She was crying. She was like, I can't take it. I go, wow, wow, what happened? I'm thinking, it's our big action day. I'm shooting the scene inside the bank and outside the bank. Literally, outside, I'm blowing up cars. Inside, I'm shooting up the whole bank. So, uh, so she comes up to me crying. And it turns out that she was, the, the AD was coming up with a schedule which is normal because we schedule films, you know, the, the day before for the next day's scenes. And she picked it up and looked at it, and he ripped it from her hand, got her face, started cussing at her, don't you ever fucking look at this stuff before I approve it. And and he started really, really chewing around. He's a big guy. He's, I don't know, six foot tall. And so she was crying and going to quit. And I said, no, 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 hold on, hold on. So I went up to the AD. I said, what the fuck? They're just fucking telling you, man, don't be abusive, brother. Come on. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. And he started telling me off, and I said, you know what, no, fuck you. And uh, he says, you know what, if you keep talking to me like that, Dr. Macho, I'm going to quit, I'm going to take my, my assistance with me, so you're going to have no assistance on the set. I said, you know what, go fuck yourself. Excuse my language, Corey, but... No, no, the, I, you're not censored on this show. <clears throat> well, I, go screw yourself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and he literally, literally that day he gave me his walkie, him and his assistant walked off the set, so here I am. I have to control traffic on the street. I have to control, you know, all the gunshots and everything else. I put the walkie on my belt. I called the the, the cops who are controlling traffic. I said, okay, great. This is Art Camacho. I am, I'm running the show. So literally, I would go outside the bank. They would stop the traffic because we were shooting in real streets in L.A. We got 90 seconds. Okay, great. Now the car comes running out. Action, car comes running out. 
big explosion, throwing grenades at the car, and cut. Okay, cops, you can let the traffic go, right? Run inside. Okay, and action. Okay, you know, people just shooting up everything, and cut. Okay, great. And I kept going back and forth, and that's the biggest action weekend when we were shopping bank sequence. I had no assistance. I was running everything, man. That was a rush. (laughs) That was a rush. What's Gary like to work with? He seems like, uh, I've only talked to him once off the record, he seems like just the most quiet guy in the world, so to speak. Yeah, he's very quiet. I mean, we're friends, I mean, but he's very quiet. Very quiet. You know, um, we're not like like buddies like with Don, but, but no, he's, he's a good guy. He's very talented, very talented, very specific on what he wants, <clears throat> you know, and uh, yeah, 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 nice guy. You know, another one of my favorite films you were a part of was Whatever It Takes. Uh, you had Don, the dragon, you had Fred the Hammer, <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. I always thought it was funny that the video covers had the wrong names above the people. But, I mean, that's, that I always thought was classic. But I really like that, and I like the fact that, you know, here we are. It's not your typical, oh, the two cops are after the Coke dealer, or yeah. the heroin dealer. They're after a, a designer steroid dealer. It was very original. It was a, a great film. Right, right. No, you know what? I, I love that film. I love working on that film. And it was, again, it was a crazy situation because, uh, you know, and, and I respect the director. He, he did a good job, but I ended up having to come and direct some scenes after the fact, you know, and working with the hammer, working with the dice man. That was so cool, brother. So cool. Because, you know what? And now, I mean, finally, the, the, the Andrew, is, is Andrew Dice Clay is getting his, his, uh, his, his, his his due respect and accolades for acting, you know, when he did that uh, that show. But uh, but I always thought he was a great actor. Oh, he's a, a fantastic great... actor. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the hammer, come on. The hammer. The hammer, man. He's the hammer 24-7, brother. He's the hammer. Uh, I've yet to um, I've yet to have the have the privilege of meeting or talking to the hammer, but uh, I mean, at first it was like the hammer's given Don the Dragon an awful lot in this fight. Then the more I thought about it, it was like, well, he is the hammer, so I, you know, it's Corey, <laughs> it's the hammer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the, I just like how they all had a name. It's like the hammer, the dragon, dice. You know, it was it was great, and it was just a fun film. I I really like the the fact that they were after this the steroids thing. I thought it was very good. Yeah. It was, made it very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, again, before I continue on, I want to apologize for, 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 for cussing on your show, brother. I was just I cuss all the time. You're okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, it's just that I get excited. And, you know, I, anyway, but, uh, but no, no, I, I really, uh, on that one, it was, it was fun, fun to work with because, uh, you know, and, and one particular scene, it was like in, uh, I think I expressed to you on, uh, on Half Bad Dead where I had only a certain amount of time to shoot the fight scene. This one, um, I had, uh, we were going to shoot some fight scenes, and there was a little bit of conflict with the main director. <clears throat> and you know what? Before I wouldn't express these things because I always kept everything positive, but now I just like to, you know, eh, be honest. And, you know, uh, he had a conflict with me being on the set because when, when, uh, in those days, basically with, with Don's, with Don and me, his contract with the producers was we have carte blanche on all the action, we, we do what we do. And I answer to Don. I don't really answer to the producers or, or the director. So, so there was a little bit of conflict there. And we were supposed to shoot this fight scene. And, uh, and the director didn't give us the time. We were supposed to have like, you know, a couple hours to shoot or three or four hours, whatever it was. And, and, and I'm waiting on the set. I got, I got the actors. I got everybody, you know, ready to shoot it. And no camera, no, no DP. So it's like, okay. So I called main set. I said, guys, where's my camera? Oh, the director has it. You, you can't get it. So I said, okay. Then they, they finally, after about an hour, they gave me one camera and they put it, gave me a left. There were some lights already from the set. And I said, guys, I need to shoot this. We're running out of time. <clears throat> you know, so it's a big fight scene and nothing. And then, uh, and so I finally, finally got to a point where, where I said, okay. I looked at the crew because they, they left me part of a crew there. So I said, does anybody know how to turn on this camera? Some of those assistant camera guys. So I, I can shoot it. Okay, absolutely. Okay, you're, I just promoted you to DP of my fight scene. <laughs> and <laughs> so literally, I didn't care. I mean, I had a scouting crew, two, three people there, and we start shooting the fight scene. Next thing you know, a crew member comes over there. That I guess they were seeing us shoot. They didn't want us to shoot because they, they were trying to screw up our shot or my shot, whatever. So then 
I'm um, shooting this scene. All of a sudden, the guy knocks over there. He picks a, he starts taking one of those lights in the middle of the shot. And I said, God, God, what the hell's going on? He goes, he goes, no, no, the director told me to take this light. I go, fuck you. You take that <laughs> light, motherfucker. You're talking to me. Excuse my language. I apologize. But, uh, you're good. But, but I'm telling you, Corey, this guy was literally, I'm shooting him. He's taking my light. I said, you're not taking anything. If the director wants to tell him to come to me right now. And so he stopped. He, he knew I meant business. And so finally, after that moment, nobody else bothered us. We finished shooting the fight scene, and then, you know, the rest is history. But it was a funny situation, man. I got some weird experiences sometimes, you know? And again, I was a lot more hot-headed then. Now, now, now I'm mellow. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Gangland. That's one of my favorite films, actually. <laughs> I tell you, man. <laughs> you know what? I, the funny thing is, I that film was so successful. It was. It was. Well, I was embarrassed to be honest. With you. I was embarrassed of that film because I, I. We were making it up as we were going along. We were making it up as we were going along because I, I signed you to do two films: Redemption and that one. And that one again, I loved the concept. The cast and the crew was amazing. I mean, my God, you! I was a. It was like a kid in a candy store. Sasha Mitchell, Victor. Webster, Victor Webster, uh, you know, uh, Kathleen Kinmon and Costas, my brother Costas Mandalore, man. I loved, loved, loved the, the working with them, but the script was, was, was not done. It was it was done, but it wasn't, you know, a polished script. So we were, we were making it up as we are going, you know. Every morning we'd have to sit there at least two hours. I'd have Kathleen in the director, all these in the director's chair, and we were writing the scenes as we're, as we're you know, as we're uh, going to be shooting them that day, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, and then, uh, then they needed more more name power for whatever reason. That's when we saw brought in Ice T and Coolio, and that was right before Ice T went on to do his series, uh, that, that cop oh, series. He yeah, did. Law and Order. Yeah, Law and Order. Yeah, and. Uh, and he was great and cool. You know what surprised me? Number one, I, I've done a couple of films with Ice-T. I love the guy. A lot of respect for him. Cool was the first time, but it surprised me as how good and how serious he took his acting. The guy was just amazing. I mean, there was, the cast-wise, there was nothing. Nothing negative that I could say about those guys. That, that I mean, I'm telling you, brother, it was the best experience <clears throat> I had. But all the other challenges. The cool thing was shooting on Steven Spielberg's set when we shot uh, some of the scenes over there, we shot on the Jurassic Park set, you know? <laughs> and it was so cool, Universal Studios. And that's one thing. I mean, this guy, this Marco, he had he had a knack and because his name was on it. He would really put, put money into getting sets and getting us actors. And, you know, I tip my hat to the guy. Really, really good in that respect. But Gangland was just a crazy movie, brother. Crazy movie, bro. You know, we're shooting, uh, you know, at Universal Studios set. Then we go on the little house on the prairie set. And, like, you know, these great actors and then fights and shooting. And it was crazy, brother. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, glad you oh, I'm a huge <laughs> mark for Sasha Mitch. I started doing, uh, started studying <clears throat> Thai boxing after he, uh, after he kind of took over the franchise of Kickboxer when he was in part two. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. fans. If you haven't seen Gangland, here's a spoiler. I was pissed off when he died in that movie. I'll tell you, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, I know, man. <laughs> but, but Kathleen carries the torch. You Kathleen know, carries the torch. She's awesome. <laughs> I love her, man. She's awesome. She is. Yeah. She's, you know, I just, I love her to death as a human being and, and very talented, obviously, you know? I became friends with her. I actually, I talked to her yesterday, and I remember when I first met. I, I met her by interviewing her, and I oh said, really? And I said, <laughs> you know, I said, I know that the horror market loves you. You know, yeah, Halloween reanimated, they embrace you. I was like, but I said the action market, they embrace you too. I said you've done the Alexa movies and Renegade and all these other. Movies. I said you're you're a hell of a female action star. I said you need to really you know, em embrace that. I said, I, I, I like you more as an action star than I do a horse, uh, horror star. <laughs> you know what? She's so, one thing that I really admire about her is her work ethic. She really, I mean, we were, we were working crazy hours and crazy circumstances to have her, you know, she'd have to learn fight scenes on the spot and, and she just, man, she was, she was a, such a amazing, amazing, uh, person to work with. I love her to death, man. I can't say enough nice things about her. And, and the whole cast, I'll be honest with you, the whole cast. I mean, Sasha, I thought Costas became brothers, man. I love the guy. And uh, Sasha, of course, come on. You know, and uh, he was just amazing. And Victor, Victor was a sweet guy then. I mean, sweet guy. He hadn't done the, the Mutant X or hadn't done some of the bigger things that he did afterwards, but 
sweet guy, very, very good, very charismatic, great actor. You know, that's where Dave DeFalco, Dave DeFalco had a knack for getting good talent in his movies. You know, he, he, he did. I mean, we, we, you know, I get, I tip my hat to the guy, the producer and writer, you know. And again, fun experiences. I appreciate everything, you know. You know, my opinion, your best film is Don the Dragon's best film, and that's Redemption. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, that is one of, and, and everybody's like, and, and I'm one of them guys, like, Where's this, and I, I hate to use the term, but it's what they use. Where's the B-team expendables? Where's all my straight-to-video ex- action guys, you know? They, Don the Dragon, Richard Norton, Cynthia Rothrock, same show. They had it. You had that before anyone knew it was a thing. It's such an amazing, it's such a good film. Don's was so good in it. I mean, I'm, I love that film. I can't say enough good things about that film. Ah, uh, thank you, brother. That was, you know, that film, honestly, I think uh, it was the most, challenging in some ways with Chris Penn because uh, he had a lot of issues at the time but he gave the performance of his lifetime he gave the performance of his lifetime he was great great as a human being Chris was a great guy I wasn't buddy buddies with him but we became friends through Don but great great human being I really did I mean you know he had his own substance issues stuff like that but he was a great great guy he really uh, you know a, a tremendous tremendous actor um, but uh, but yeah yeah, I can't say enough good things about him. And, and come on, James Russo. My God, James Russo is just amazing. And, and here's the thing with Don is that Don, and, and, and I tell him, you know, he always downplays his acting, stuff like that. But when he's well-directed, when, but I mean well-directed, let me rephrase that. When you direct it, you don't just, you know, with Don, you, you, he's one of those people, you can't just, you know, hear shoot the script, you know, and do the scene. No, no. I like to sit with him and we talk and we talk, and I try to get him in that mindset. Specifically, like, I'd like to tell him when he's in the scene with James Russo, even though James Russo is doing all the dialogue, you can see, you can see the emotion in Don's face. You see his performance. And, um, and so that's, 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 that was a fun film because it was a good script. It was a good script. So when you got that, you hear the thing, Corey, a lot of people don't really understand is that, you know, when you, when you have a good script, and unfortunately a lot of these films back then, we didn't. We all, we never had, not never, never. I mean, I've had like a couple of films that I think I'm very proud of, but you know, with the script is the foundation, brother. If you don't have a good blueprint for your building, you're not going to have a great building. You know, or you will, but it'll be, you know, <laughs> be rough around the edges. And, uh, in Redemption, I was so blessed because, uh, just in life, I tell you, I'm blessed. But in that film, with those actors, my God, when I direct, give an idea, when I'm directing, <clears throat> whether it's Armand Asante or James Russo, people like that, I'm more like a traffic cop. I see myself as a traffic cop because basically I'm just watching and saying, okay, well, why don't you steer this way or steer that way? And that's it. Performance is always there. It's like, holy moly. Sometimes I forget to yell cut. <laughs> and I get into the, you know. Uh, that's okay. a hell of a movie. I mean, amazing action, great, uh, just such a good story, and I mean, such a good cast too. I mean, that's. Uh, I hope one day that actually gets the right treatment, and gets a real, you know, audio commentary, deleted scenes, you know, because I've heard some of the, I've heard some of the making of and some of the behind the scenes stuff on that movie were crazier than the movie itself. <laughs> I got to tell you, brother, I mean, I, I don't know that I want to share this, but I'm, I'll share it off the record. There was a, one of the craziest things. No, no, don't share it off the record when we hang up. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Uh, you got, I'm serious, man. I, I was, it, it even took me by surprise, you know, but uh, great. Overall, I, I can't say enough good things about everyone involved in that film. Really, James, you know, Sam Jones, the smallest part was. It was great. Cynthia, come on. I mean, she comes in that room, in that locker room, and she does her scene. I told her that. I recently saw her, you know, obviously I had her on my show, but she just got a firebomb. And I can't, same thing, same thing. When you direct her, when you really get into her head as an actress, she can really deliver the goods. I want to know how she doesn't age. I'm telling you, brother. I, I, and I'm, I'm literally standing, you know, inches from her. I'm looking at her. It's like, holy moly. This woman is beautiful. This woman is just oh. Ava. I had a crush on her when I, it was funny, and I and I told Richard Norton this, I had a crush on her when I was, I still do, I guess, but I mean, I did when I was probably, well, I've been 19, 20, and I remember Richard Norton was always in her movies, and I even told him, I was like, you know, 
I hated your guts. I said, I thought you were dating her. I was like, there's that fucking blonde haired, good looking guy making time with my woman again every time I watch these shows. <laughs> You know, so and and uh, no, I mean, and like I see her when I talk to her, it's like, my God, I look thirty years older. It's like you look ten years younger. What the hell is your secret? Trust me, brother. I feel the same way, man. I'm looking at her like, dang, dang. You know, and then Richard Norton's another one you mentioned him. I love him to death. He's so one. Cool. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, but also underrated actor. I'm glad he's getting his due now in stunts, but as an actor, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant actor, very natural, very natural. Oh, his Hong Kong stuff was amazing, especially the stuff where yeah. he'd be paired up against Sammo. I mean, that was just some of the just best stuff I'd ever seen at that time. Yeah, absolutely, brother, absolutely. Now, before I ask you about your show, because going over your filmography would take us another couple hours, Half Past Dead 2... Uh, yeah, Bill Goldberg. You know, I like Bill Goldberg. He was a great wrestler, but Bill Goldberg uh, has the look. He has s screen presence. D do you have any guess why he never like went on to become a big like an, an, an at least an action star? Or do you think he just yeah. wasn't didn't yeah. want to? I don't know because the guy was brilliant. Well, again, I love him to death. I love him to death. I remember going to his house when we were doing the thing. Great guy and, and, and great talent. And, and you saw physically that son of a gun can just you know, do a fight scene like no other, like no other. And huh. nobody got any sort of stuff. It looks so violent, but it's so, so, so safe. <clears throat> so safe. And I love working with him. I really, you know, got him and, uh, and then, and then all the cast on that film was, was fun. Just good people. Good people, man. Yeah, I always kind of wondered. It was like, this guy's a monster. You know, he doesn't, mm -hmm. he doesn't need, it, just like in wrestling, he doesn't need to talk. All he's got to do is look at the camera. It was yeah. like, you know, and, and he did a few films. And then, you know, I mean, he still wrestles per, spir sporadically. But it was kind of like, I wonder why this guy never made a bid for a big yeah. an action role. He was a natural at it. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I loved it. Again, he was, he was great. I mean, he was great. He was, he was my brother. I loved him to death, man. Very talented and very, very respectful and then good. Good at what he does, man. But like I was telling you before, I don't know what, what it is that some people just don't, uh, don't transcend that. I don't understand. That, that's what I don't understand, to be honest with you. I really don't. As long as I've been in the business, I really don't. It's funny, you know? too, when they go for something else, like uh, I'll use Sasha Mitchell. Amazing uh, martial arts tie skills. His Muay Thai is fantastic. Yeah. Probably the best Muay Thai I'd seen on camera then. But he made his mark as a, you know, on a sitcom. As yeah. a, as a, I remember when Kickboxer 2 came out, because I, I had known him only from TV, and everybody's like, man, they made a Kickboxer 2. And I was like, yeah. well, Van Damme? Kickboxer? What? I was like, so I was like, this is, the, this is the dumb guy from Step by Step. What's he doing in a martial arts movie? You know, it's like, wow, this guy is badass. Like, it's funny how they can, <laughs> some people make their mark as, you know, something else. Like, cast this Mandalore, you know, I mean, he's the guy yeah. from Saw now. You know, all the horror people embrace him. Exactly. 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 And, and him and Lewis, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together a project that I'm hoping to do with Lewis soon. Uh, great guys. Great guys, man. Both of them. I mean, Jesus. That's phenomenal. Tell us about your show. Well, it was interesting because I, I really, for the most part, this year was, was very weird for me because, I mean, I actually uh, had like a co-starring, uh, not co-starring, well, in an episode, yes, in, in, uh, in a series with Olivia Gruner this year. And um, and then, then, uh, then, then you know, and then the shutdown happened. And out of the blue, I get this, this uh, text from, uh, from one of the producers at LA Network and said, hey, Art, you know, we want to do a show, a martial arts kind of show, kind of a talk show <clears throat> that'll somehow incorporate the museum and the martial arts museum. So I thought, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, cool. So I called my brother, uh, Mike, Michael Matsuda, who, you know, the founder of the martial arts museum, and uh, and I said, hey, and he got the same call. So I said, great, let's put something together. And, <clears throat> and so I didn't think, I didn't take it that seriously. It's a text. <laughs> so I think, okay, great. It's kind of cool. It's probably like something that they're thinking of in the... the the far future so um, so I called him and we talked and he says yeah 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 we want to do something and he says look at Robert Rodriguez show the uh, um, the directing show that he'd be a director something like that mm -hmm. so I looked I thought 
okay, then we can do that. I mean, I can do that in my sleep. And so I said, well, what if we have something more? I mean, you know, she says, all right, you know, give me a concept, pitch, give me a pitch. So, so I said, you know, I couldn't think of a title. So I had another partner of mine, give me some titles, man. You know, because I didn't want inside martial arts or this and that. Just something cool. And this guy came up with a Camacho experiment. I couldn't think of nothing better. So I said, okay, I'm going to pitch it, but I, eh. And so, so, so I pitched the idea and they bought it. They said, we love it. We love it. Let me, let me take it to the hires up. And, uh, and I go, you, you love it. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, again, like another week goes by. And another text, okay, you're, you're still in the running. I said, nah, this is not going to happen. So anyway, so long story short is that she called me up and said, okay, we got a deal. We're going to do six episodes as, as, as kind of a, the, the first one, and um, you're done. So talk to, here's the, talk to the president. So the next thing you know, I'm on the Zoom call with the president, the legal team, the producing team. is like, holy moly, this is real. <laughs> now I got to deliver. Uh, but I thought when they when they asked me, I thought they were just thinking of me, you know, producing and directing. Mm-hmm. And then when they said, well, you know what? We want you to host it. I said, host it? Because I, I thought, I can get you. I'll find, out. I'll find some good-looking host, young Latino, studly or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. No, we'd like you to do it. I said, I don't know. Then I talked to Michael. He goes, yeah, do it, do it. You got to do it. You got to get in front of the camera again. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> you know, I really did not <laughs> What you do is amazing. The way you're interviewing, your style, everything is really amazing. I'm being honest with you, man. I, you know, now that I've been on your side, like, holy crap. To be honest with you, that was the hardest thing I've done in 30 years, man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and so here I am. But then I thought, you know what? We got to make it Camacho style. And then and, and, and I can't just sit down and talk. Because, I mean, number one, uh, we needed to make the, the questions a little more, just like you're doing right now. You you did your research on me, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, the scary thing is, is every movie I've mentioned, I own. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> I've shared with you things I've never shared, to be honest with you. I really haven't. <laughs> I'm serious. And uh, but, but what we wanted to do was make it, because, again, the mission statement was to really get deep into what what challenges these people face growing up and coming up and what it took to be the, the world champion or the greatest or whatever and what what would they say to people out there who are in their same position you know what were their inspirations and and uh how would they inspire others what in other words i'm this little fat slow watching you in the ring or on the film um what would you tell me if you're talking to me I and mean, that was a message and then and then i said you know what Let's go beyond that. Since we're going to do a talk show, I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get in the ring or go get in, you know, get in the dojo with them. Like with, with, with one Graciela Casilla, she was a, the first female boxing, kickboxing champion ever. And um, then on top of that, on top of that, she got two masters. And on top of that, she became a master at Eskrima and then Kali and JKD. So it's like, holy moly. So with her, I said, you know what? I said, oh, what do you want to teach me? So, and I'm teaching knives. So we do a segment within the talk show with each one of them gets physical. Whether it's Don in the ring, Benny in the ring, or Graciela in the dojo, or, or Cynthia showing me how to use the hook swords. I wanted to make it fun, educational, informational, and Camacho style, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is, man. It's an experiment, and it's like, and I, uh, it's funny, because if, if, I think it's for you to hear uh, if you're drunk or you're high, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> no, I don't need to be drunk or high. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wa- I'm gonna find a way to watch it. Uh, El Ray, it's gonna be on the El Ray network. I know El Ray's had some issues. Uh, my satellite provider doesn't carry it. I think a few cable providers in my area don't. But um, you can still watch it streaming. I do believe. I think it's on. Is it Roku or Apple TV? There, you, there's still ways to watch them. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's actually, honestly speaking, I think, I think you know, if you, you know, my skills aren't that good as a host, but I mean, the information and the message. And, and, and the funness of it is there. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I pulled in some big favors to give me the title sequence. It's sort of like, if, you, if you've ever seen Mission Impossible, how they go through all these scenes, their title sequence. So what we did, we got, actually, we got some, a good buddy of mine, I don't know if there's, there's a band, uh, that a Grammy Award winning band that did, did a, lot, a lot of stuff in the 90s, 2000s, called Los Lonely Boys. Okay. Um, and Grammy, stuff like that, they were Santana and shit like that, but they, they had this song, called Rule the World. And I loved it. I loved it to death. It was on one of their albums. 
and, and it's an anthem to me. It's an anthem to me. It's like, rule the world to me means just rule yourself, man. Make the world what you want it to be. And so I needed that song. I needed that song to be in the title sequence. And, uh, and everybody said, you can't get it. You can't get it. So I was begging, borrowing. I did every research out of the sun and, and finally got, got everybody. I mean, got everybody to sign off on it. And we obviously, you know, we, we, we paid, but, uh, but, uh, it was an amazing song, and that's our title sequence, Rule the World, because it's a very empowering song, and that's the message, if anything, that, that I that I live by. It's like, rule the world, not the world, not that I want to be, you know, ha, I want to be president or king, but yeah. rule your own, brother. You know, don't let the world dictate who you are. You dictate to the world who you are. And that's that. Then I got friends of mine who did a lot of work with Disney. They worked on Avatar. They worked on with Jim Henson. They created the whole title sequence for me. So, so that alone is really bitching, really bitching. The opening sequence of the film of the show, really cool, brother. You got to see that. <laughs> who are some of your who? Yeah, I know you. You mentioned Don. You mentioned Sid. There, we're yeah. going to see. Uh, who else are we going to see? Or do you want to keep that under wraps for now? Oh, no, we, we, you know, in the first episode, we had Graciela Casillas, because she, like I told you, I mean, you know, the, the, the interesting thing, the interesting thing, Corey, is that even with me growing up, um, there was a lot of racism still then. But as a kid, you know, since Spanish was my first language at home, so when I was going into school, Arturo was, was my, my full name, my mm-hmm. birth name. And so, <clears throat> so people would make fun of me, and teachers would have a hard time pronouncing it. So when I turned legally 18, I changed it to art, and I was in denial of my culture. It wasn't until a couple of years later that I thought, you know, screw you. What are you, idiots? You know, come on, you're not, you're damn next year, you can't hide the fact. <laughs> sort of bleak skin. <laughs> <laughs> so I started embracing it, and then I regretted it, but by that time, it's too late because I already made my name. Uh, that's hard Camacho, but, but uh, a lot of us, a lot of us in that era faced a lot of the same thing. Graciela, Graciela Casillas was her name. And the, the teachers made her change it to Grace. You know? Mm-hmm. It wasn't related that she embraced Graciela. You know, uh, June Castro is another uh, iconic martial artist that interviewed her father. I've known him as Ralph Castro, and that seemed always weird to me. And then she, she explained to me on the show how he, basically, he was Rafael Castro. And he, he changed it to Ralph. You know, a lot of stuff like that that people don't really know. Even Don told me about some of the racism he faced. It was interesting, interesting stuff. So we have Don, we have uh, obviously Ben Irquitas, Graciela Casillas, Cynthia. And then we have a guy, I don't know if you're familiar with him, Blinky Rodriguez. He was, he was with, uh, with, with, with Benny in that era. But his biggest thing was he, uh, his son got got killed by a drive-by in gang violence. Mm. To, to make it even worse, Corey, check this out. <clears throat> he goes to court, and and in court, the guys are making fun of him, doing gang signals. And then they go and desecrate the kid's headstone. Jesus Christ! Yeah. They they put their gang signal, you know signs on it, and yet and yet he told me, God reached out to him and told him to forgive them. He was like he had so much anger, so much anger. Your 16-year-old son gets shot to death, and they're humiliated, they're doing all these things, and he turned that to hope. He turned that anger, channeled all that anger to hope, and he's now one of the biggest advocates here, and he helps, and he, he basically turned his life to helping, uh, you know, gang members, helping, helping people get out of that and live a life. And so, um, so, so that one became more of a PSA spot, because at the end, we put a, where people can go if they're having issues, where they can go get help, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, man, I was almost crying in, at the end of that episode. Literally, I had to, you know, we, we had to stop. And literally, you catch some of that on, on, on the episode because I was, I was, you can't see it because I was wearing my glasses, but I was in tears, man. I was in tears. I, like so, I like to wear glasses, too. It hides me if there's ever a camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, here's the thing, man. Here's another latent thing is that the, uh, the, uh, when I'm always in these group settings, you know, and I go to these events and all that stuff, you know, a lot of people are always taking pictures. And again, I'm not, I'm not bragging, I'm just making a statement. But so, so what happens, let's say for example, I'll be in a group of maybe five people and there's, you know, you got 20 cameras on you. And so I always look good at every camera because you can't tell which one I'm looking at. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> your sunglasses cover everything, man. I always look at the right one. <laughs> well, I, you know, I told everybody, and it's it's going to be official. It'll be official before the. For you and I talk, they'll be official today you know, before the interview even goes up. Uh, I said, when you interview Art Camacho, I've had a beard for 20 years. Uh, I had to get ready. I'm going to have a mustache and sunglasses for this. <laughs> I month, love it. So. <laughs> and you're going to be one of these films, brother. I promise you that. I, I'll tell you, man. I always, I always tell everybody, henchman two. I'm not good <laughs> enough to be the first henchman, but I'm better than three. So, and, and I, the way I look at it, I've taken beatings for free. Might as well make 20 bucks off of it. Come on. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're good enough for Henchman 2. Henchman 3, maybe, but not Henchman 2, brother. Yeah, it's... That's... <laughs> my big thing, and I always wanted to be in a film, even if it's just for a few minutes, so I could go to my... My son's 11. He's a junior black... He's a junior black belt in Taekwondo. And really? uh, he's a yellow belt in Kenpo Karate. And wow. what I want to always show him is be like, and I always stressed him because I didn't, I didn't go to college. Well, I went for a little bit and I didn't finish. And, and my wife, of course, went to college. She got her, her PhD and everything. So it's like, son, I, I, I want you to be, I want you to be like mom. Don't be like me. Be like mom. See how more successful she is when you do this. But I also one day want to go, son, look at this DVD. That's your dad getting his ass handed to him right there. So. <laughs> I always want to do that. The same thing is like you should always go to school, but you should also always follow your dream kind of thing. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, do you have any 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 friends in, in L.A. area or Vegas? Zero. I don't have any okay. friends, period. Kathleen, the, big, the running gag is my only friend is Kathleen Kidmont. It even says that on my Instagram. My only friend is Kathleen Kidmont. <laughs> I'm a lonely man. I'm well, very I lonely. Tell me, if you can get your butt out of here, you're going to be in the film. Oh, I would love you know? to. I'd take a beating. <laughs> We're going to have fun, man. I don't need, but you know what it is, brother? It is fun. It, beyond anything else, it's stressful all shit, but, but, but you're right. I tell you the truth, man. I, I look back, and, and when I did my first film, I said, I did it. I'll get done. Yeah, color me, color me, color me, done, brother. That's it. I didn't. Th- I really didn't think I was going to do any other film in my life. I just thought this is so fucking cool. She's my life skill, so cool. And uh, and here, here I am, thirty years later, brother. <laughs> yeah, the way I look at it, I got a unique look. I'm a bleached white Hispanic who's tattooed like a yakuza. <laughs> so there ain't there, there ain't many of me out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you 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 worked your way up henchman number two. <laughs> oh yeah, see, not one because one it has to be. He's better. Two, I'd even want the old Batman shirt. Like remember the old sixty six Batman where it said like henchman two, goon yeah. one, like that. I think that, but uh, no, I've uh, no, I uh, I I think I've got a lot of ideas. Hopefully, this Corona, you know, it can't last forever. So things will change. Things will get better. I will, it will, brother. But but and, and I and I say I say it truthfully because uh, really quick last last dumb story I'll tell you is when I was sixteen when I was you know really wanting to do this thing I always I told you, I always had a dream I always deep inside I had a, a yearning to do this and an uncle of mine who loved me dearly the guy you know he practically raised me and I told him one day I said hey hey uncle you know what I don't know what it is but I really want to want to be in films <clears throat> and he looked at me and he sat me down he said look at me home. And I'm paraphrasing because he used different words. He said, look, you're fat, you're ugly, you have no talent. Get a real <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> so this fat, ugly, no talented kid is living the dream, you know? <laughs> you know, for all the people out there like me that do admire you, where can we find, where can everybody listen and where can they find you online? Online, it's uh, Facebook. They can go to Art Camacho page because the personal one I'm going to start phasing out but on Instagram, official Art Camacho, and also one, one thing that I really want to do is, is I'm building up a YouTube channel. I'm doing a lot of special stuff in there, but I'm doing that because uh, when we get to the point where we start monetizing it, I want to give you know a lot of proceeds for the martial arts nonprofit museum to help the martial arts world. You know, that's why I'm building the Art Camacho channel. So if people can support that, that would be phenomenal. Phenomenal. They just have to click on it and sign up. That's all. No money. I'm not asking for money. I'm just asking for them to sign up for the Art Camacho channel because that will help the martial arts, help the museum, and help that 
little fat kid that's that's watching DVDs or streaming these martial arts films and dreaming of being one day, you know, an action star. I have two websites, and I can tell you before uh, the evening comes around tonight, uh, there will be uh, links for the Art Camacho channel placed on the uh, friend sites on my web pages. Uh, uh, hopefully, to re- re- direct all the fans to it. Oh, God bless you, thanks, Corey. And I'm down. I'm dead serious, brother. When, when this thing, uh, when this thing ends, I mean, not even when it ends. When you feel comfortable, and if we're doing some stuff, you're going to have an opportunity. I'll, I'll tell you, hey, we're shooting. Get your butt down here if you want to be henchman one, two, three, or four. <laughs> will, will you be the one beating me up? Because I trust you. <laughs> yeah, you'll never. And that's the thing, brother. I could sell it. As a matter of fact, who, who was I? Was, I was doing. A, I was training. I was doing a seminar with, with this, this really badass boxer. And and uh, he, he was very. I think I could not be silly, but in film I could kick his butt. I'm telling you, I was swiping it so fast, fast, but with, with controls, the choreography, and 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 then he was like, you could just see his eyes like, oh shit, Bill Mexico was gonna hit me, you know. But he was all safe. But the way you express it, the way your body moves, it's like a whip. You know, you're whipping, you're punching out there. They look so much, so powerful. When it's so so safe, <laughs> yeah. safe. I was. Uh, yeah. Everybody always wanted me to be their uke when when we we would do martial arts. Oh, yeah. I remember I worked with this one kid, and you know I I mean I don't know him. It's been so long. This kid couldn't knock over an empty trash can. But I said, you know, I, I promise you, you won't. Lo-. And I was already. I probably had a hundred pounds on him. You know, an and easy ten years. And I was like, I'll make you look like a million bucks. I said, tomorrow's your test. I said. <laughs> I said, you're going to deflect my foot. I said, you're going to do it with your fist. You're going to spin it right up into a clothesline. I said, I'll fly for you. I said, everybody here be afraid of you. And we, the sad thing is we ran it through and we ran it through and I'm practicing them. And for an hour, I let this kid bump me. The mat kept getting sweatier and sweatier oh. and sweatier. Uh-huh. And so finally I said, let's try it one more time before the, before class tomorrow. I had fallen so many times. I, I was just naturally at that point tucking my arm in. I slipped on the sweat. My elbow went clean into my ribs. I bruised like three ribs. Couldn't breathe. I still went there the next day, and I couldn't test because I was too hurt. But I tell you what, that kid got his yellow belt, and I never seen his family smile so good. So that made me feel good. <laughs> That's so cool, brother. So cool. I just hope he don't try that move in in real life because he get his ass beat in ten seconds. <laughs> for, for those two minutes, he had he had the, the greatest moment under the sun there. <laughs> that's so cool brother so cool well, I want to Corey, Corey, thank wonderful. you so much oh thank you brother I mean thank this, you. Is, this has been an honor for me Corey this is the funnest one I've ever done oh. I just I was comfortable with you brother I'd be honest with you I'd be honest thank you so much brother oh, man I appreciate that I hope you can come back again and we can talk some more Absolutely, brother. That's, and I'll, I'll try to keep the cussing down. I apologize. I just, that's how comfortable I felt with you, brother. That's how I talk, too, man. It ain't no problem. This this show's marked explicit for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, God bless you, brother. Let's be in touch. And I'm, and I'm, I'm being honest with you. That's an open invitation, man. Next time I do a film, you get an opportunity to be in it and have fun with us. Come and play. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to the Chronicles of Hollywood History. Thank you from Gomez Richmond Productions.